Hello and welcome to a week 17 edition of Establish the Bets. As always, joined by Matthew Davidow, the other side of the counter, formerly on our side of the counter, now on the other side of the counter, taking on the action, seeing all the action, taking the big bets. Matthew, happy new year. How's it going, Thanks, buddy? Adam. New year to you, everybody else. This is a very, very interesting week 17 slate for a couple of reasons. First of all, I feel like there's more motivation stuff people are talking about in week 17, the, the week before the final week than normal. We saw what happened with the Titans where they didn't really have anything to play for on Thursday. They go out there, don't play any of their guys and actually play really, really well. And like, that's the kind of unexpected stuff that I think people can't get their heads around. I, what do you think about trying to figure out all this rest and motivation stuff. Is this a situation where you wait for the market to tell you what's going on, or you do actually try to seek out information and try to predict what teams might do or which guys might play? Um, I'm I'm usually in a in a position to just wait and see, and then analyze what ends up being there. You know, come game day, or you know, come whenever the the, the market gets the gets bigger. I definitely think that uh, getting a good read on who's going to play, who's not going to play, can get you good bets early in the week if you're you know, on the on the ball on the ball with that, I I tend to think that the teams the teams that are resting because they're going to the playoffs they almost always try to win. I mean, <laughs> maybe the exception being like Tennessee, like ow, I mean they had like no chance anyway, but they didn't call their timeouts, which I thought was pretty uh pretty lame for a uh, football game for a team to not call their timeouts on defense when they're down by two scores. Uh, on the flip side of that, you got teams like the Raiders that are like dumping for other reasons and i think like i would <laughs> i would never really want to be on the side of those teams if i could help it right it's it's crazy yeah and like you said the titans like i it was just they treated it like an exhibition game like let's see what we have in josh dobbs and josh dobbs actually went out and played a really good game surprisingly good game to me i mean we had a bunch of unders on like dac attempts and dac mm. dac stuff just thinking that you know this game is not going to require a lot of dac and you know they came out and play well so never know in the nfl anyways Speaking of weird situations, Jacksonville has like a six to eight percent chance to still get a wild card with a win and then a loss, but they have a one hundred percent chance to get in with a week eighteen win. If I was Doug Peterson, and I'm not clearly, if I was Doug Peterson, I would rest my guys this week. I, I really would because everything comes down to their game in week eighteen. If they can't beat Josh Dobbs or Malik Willis or whatever they do with a rested team, however, however. That's not what Doug Peterson says. Doug Peterson says that he's going to play their guys. They're going out to win this game. They don't want to establish a culture of resting guys when they're healthy, especially in week 17, et cetera, et cetera. The market today seemed to react pretty violently to me to what I thought was a predictable, questionable listing on Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence has been listed questionable for like a month straight. So I didn't really think that was news. What do you make of all the Jacksonville stuff going on right now? Well, you got a you got a loaded basket here, Adam. You, you have Peterson, remember he was the well, I don't know if he was the author or the the illustrator of one of the I thought really saddest dumps I've seen recently. Whenever the, there was a playoff game what three years ago, uh, and it was Washington and Washington I needed yeah. the game. I think it was Washington. And the Eagles just not only not only didn't play their guys. I mean, play whoever you want. Who cares? But then like it seemed like they were. Actively trying to not like to call plays that like weren't going to work and not put their guys in situations, and I don't think that's what I don't think that's what sports is about. And as far as you know, I mean, <laughs> I think we've had the had the tanking conversation a number of times already. But I think there's value to be in nine and eight versus eight and nine. I, I think there's uh, I, I think every game every game matters. I think particularly there's a situation where Jackson's real chance of winning the Super Bowl. I mean, it's, it's far far less than one percent. Right. Well, what, Playoffs, yeah, that's nice, but they have a better chance to make the playoffs if they win this game. Now, I think if I were them, if I had anybody who could clearly be healthier, particularly in the line of scrimmages, I would rest those players. I would definitely play Lawrence. I might rest CTN, for instance. I, I do think I would rest a couple of players here, but I would play Lawrence. I would certainly try to have a game plan and all, all that jazz. I think the market reacted today. Might have been wrong. These markets are small right now, especially on like something like Jacksonville. They all they're gonna jump jump quickly, and I think people remembering Peterson, people thinking like you, you know, maybe a few other similar type reasons has it going down. 
I think if Jacksonville needed this game, like needed it, I think the line would be like seven. Yeah, exactly. Maybe and I think that, week seven. I, I tend to believe Peterson. Like I, I think that he's like a football bro, and we're projecting right now uh, for our projections at ETR for them to be almost all out in this game to win, including ETN, including Evan Ingram, including Trevor Lawrence and all their guys. So I, I don't know, man. Like I think Jacksonville minus three. I don't think it can get lower than that, right? Like if you took Jacksonville th- minus three right now, I feel like it cannot get much lower than that, assuming Trevor Lawrence plays, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, unless <laughs> Lawrence doesn't play. Right. But that, that would, if they're going to rest, they're going to rest Lawrence. Yeah. He, I think it's very non-zero that they rest Lawrence, and if so, it'll be Pick or Houston, a couple points. Right. Uh, although I'm not sure that CJ beat hard is any worse than Davis Mills. But anyways, that's a story for another day. Uh, that's the rate- probably <laughs> the, similarly the Raiders decided to just like bag it with Derek Carr if I was the rest of the Raiders players I'm like shit man like Derek Carr's not playing like why should I go out there and put my body in line especially guys like Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs and some other key players for this team how much systemic risk do you think there is with Raiders stuff I know you said you wouldn't want to have a Raiders bet right now the line is 49ers minus nine and a half in Las Vegas like how do you can you even figure that out how they're going to react to the, just their starting quarterback just giving up or them giving up on their starting quarterback. How hard a team is going to not try has never been my, uh, <laughs> my forte. And my, my, I mean, clearly the Raiders are, this isn't a situation where they're resting because they're going to win in the playoffs. And, you know, Carr's not going to be there on the sidelines rooting on his backup to get one more win as you, you know, tend to see the, uh, the guys resting really, you know, get into it. Some of these games and probably the, with the, with the preparation as well. I mean, they sent Carr home. I think Adams has a comment this week, like something along the lines of, I came here to play with him. Mm-hmm. Is he studying film? Is he going to – how how hard is he going to try Sunday if he has a, you know, close type lay your body up decision? I, I would I would think he would be maybe not less inclined to uh, to do those shows that I think the Raiders are – I mean, they basically said they're going to try to lose. I guess they're done with Carr. The whole thing makes no sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I think this line probably moves up when the public gets a hold of it. I mean, 49ers, nine and a half right now. You think this closes above 10? Yes. I mean, I, I definitely know sharp people are like, holy shit, the line's 10. The car's not that good, which is obviously true. I mean, the sit versus car is probably only worth a couple points. You know, I'm but- curious what you thought of the Minshew stuff last week. And in terms of the MVP race, like I had a Jalen Hurts 40 to 1 MVP ticket before the season that I was super excited about. Then he gets hurt. He was the favorite. He gets hurt. It's not a great case for Jalen Hurts MVP, not only missing games, obviously, but also Gardner Minshew goes in there and I thought played pretty well and gave them a really good chance. I mean, they probably should have won the game down there in Dallas. I don't see how Hurts can win the MVP now, especially that he's doubtful. We have, uh, I believe the Eagles are six and a half with Minshew at home. We have five and a half, six at home against the Saints here. What do you think about that line? And I'm curious who your pick would be for MVP of the league right now, if you had a vote. Well, I, I didn't understand why Hertz was the favorite to begin with, although, you know, I've never been one to study, you know, markets or anything where it's just up to a handful of other human beings. It really matters what they're going to vote for, mm-hmm. you know, from a betting standpoint, you just try to, you know, that's what you're betting on. You're not actually betting on the MVP. I mean, clearly Hertz is not the most valuable player. He's what, not even like, is he the 10th best quarterback? You know, it's hard to say, oh, he's the MVP. I mean, when, to, to me, it's got to be Mahomes or Allen. I mean, these are the two guys, the two best offenses in the league. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, especially Buffalo, I guess it has to be. Well, they have better receivers. Kansas City has a better offensive line. Neither of which are great supporting casts around them. And both of, them, both of those offenses are heads and tails best in the league. So how do you say that they're not the MVP? Make an argument for Burrow. If, you know, make an argument for Justin Jefferson. Mm-hmm. I mean, if a wide receiver was ever going to win it, I feel like Josh Jefferson mm-hmm. deserves it this year. He's meant, and I don't, I mean, you could probably answer better than me. Like wide receivers are very rarely worth a lot to the spread. When Josh Jefferson misses a game, if he misses a game, I feel like that would be worth a lot to the spread, right? One point, point and a half. I mean. More, yeah, maybe. I mean, they're worth more than they used to be. If 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 I had a vote, I'd vote for Josh Allen. Yeah, see, I think it's Mahomes. I'd never vote for Hurts. <laughs> I think Mahomes has been incredible for the entire year with really, like, not Sub average weapons. I mean, obviously Kelsey's awesome, but the wide receiver play has not been good for Kansas City. I, I think personally Mahomes deserves it, but yeah. Yeah, like you said, Kelsey's good. And they have a good offensive one. I mean, uh, Mahomes or Allen, either one. Uh, they're both the, the, like, clearly the two best quarterbacks and in, in the most important position and worth 
the most of the line, if that's the way we're judging it in any way. And I don't think it's even even in the ballpark that those are the, the two most valuable players in the league. The more we think about it. The, there was a time in my younger days where there, uh, you know, when I was like 18, 19, I was just messing around and, and my friends would be like, we got every time a coach gets fired, we got to bet on that team the next game, right? We called it the coaching change narrative. Coach gets fired, team gets all riled up. They come out and they play harder the next game. That is the narrative around that. I don't know if you think there's any truth to that. We have the Broncos here who just fired Nathaniel Hackett, 12, 12 and a half, 13 point dog in Kansas city. What do you think about that line in the coaching change narrative? But my favorite of the coaching change narratives is if they like the coach, they play worse. And if they didn't like the coach, they play better. Like the kind of like subliminal show them that he was a good or bad coach. That's always been my favorite. Honestly, I, I have, I, I don't know or have an actual, actual good thought about it. I, I am interested in the the Broncos players that have come out in support of Wilson this week to me mm-hmm. says something and you know I even I got into my head I go Denver and the computers made it about this line and I think Denver probably has a motivation there's also the fact that Denver has not played way worse than their talent all year Not their talent's been great they have a shitty offensive line which <laughs> turned into a shitty quarterback you know, et cetera. But Hackett's not been good. The play calling hasn't been good. The games plans haven't been good. You you could make an argument that that uh, you could make an you could make an argument that Hackett's an actual part of their week to week problem, and they should get a boost for not having him coaching. I I like that angle because I I like you said they've probably underperformed their talent more than any team in the league. They have good players on both offense. And defense do the Broncos. They just massively, massively, massively underperform here. So, yeah, 12 and a half, 13. I think that's an interesting one for sure. The Bucks stuff. I watched these Bucks games, David Al, and like Brady is so bad for so long of the game, three quarters, three and a half quarters. And then lately he just flips a switch late and they win these crazy overtime games. I feel like that's kind of hard to model because like guys flipping switches or guys being quote unquote clutch, I feel like it's kind of hard to get into a number. How do you think about the Brady stuff? And this is a huge game for them. This line actually, I believe, opened two and a half. Now it's probably weak. But then it went to three, then three and a half. Now there's a lot of fours out there on the Bucks home against the Panthers. What do you think about this game? There's definitely some very sharp people I know are on, on Tampa. Kind of my head, I guess I take Carolina of this price. Carolina's been very good since uh, Darnold's played. Sorry. <laughs> They've been very good since uh, since Darnold, Dar- 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 Darnold played. And I wouldn't uh, – got in my head, I'd go Carolina. Brady's been great this year. I mean, for a 45-year-old compared to expectations, I I think he's been very good all year with limited pass protection. And at the end of the games is where quarterbacks have more – the quarterback's more important, you know, on those drives. And I think that's been a reason they've, they've, they've also obviously gotten lucky. So a lot of times they wear out the pass rushes with the, the hurry up. And that's, you know, clearly helped the team that, you know, can't protect it protect the passer so it's a short sample there's only been a couple of games that they, they've come back late and against some bad i mean yeah <laughs> it hasn't been like they've come back against the bills here there's been like yeah. you know rams without their players and and the cardinals i mean brady was bad against the cardinals man and for for most of that game and then he, they just yeah. show up late and somehow somehow win it but yeah really interesting game there for bucks falcons but yeah that line has gotten blown out a ton out to four that's really interesting I mean, just uh, think about Brady. There's 45, and he's going to be an actual sought-after free agent. Like, somebody's going to slide him, and their Super Bowls are going to go up. <laughs> Last one I want to ask about is the Jets stuff. So I was a little surprised, I guess, that Jets are a favorite on the road. I think the market has a lot of respect for Mike White versus Zach Wilson. I think deservedly so. I'm curious how many points you think roughly the difference is between Zach Wilson and Mike White. And then what do you think about this Jets-Seahawks game? I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but I, I think, like, White might be, like, five points better. Like, Mike White's an actual NFL quarterback, and I don't I don't think Zach Wilson is going to even get it. I mean, to, maybe the Steelers will sign on the backup Mitch Trubisky or something, but that's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think about where Zach Wilson's going. And Mike, if the Jets do choose to sign a different quarterback or whatever based on some of the narratives I've, you know, read of the young players – Somebody will sign Mike White. Mike White's going to be a starter in the NFL for somebody next year. And, you know, Zach Wilson's going to be not so much. Yeah. So Jets minus two in Seattle. Both teams, I believe, are still live, albeit 
somewhat thin. Um, God, you know, Jets is a road favorite here. I guess defense is probably driving this line here. And I guess the Mike White stuff as well. Any idea where this line's going to go? Because, I mean, we saw it. I believe it got up as high as two and a half. I don't think it touched three, but now it's mostly one and a half mm-hmm. out there. Any thoughts on Jets Seahawks line? Where I like the, I like the, I like the Jets. I don't think the market has enough Mike White versus Zach Wilson. Also, the the Seahawks are hurting. The, I don't know if Lockett's back, but Abe Lucas is I think out, and Abe Lucas has been fantastic this year. Also, as good as Gino was for that stretch of games, yeah, he's, he's yeah, it's it's not been so much lately. So I. I, I I'm 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 still down on Seattle versus versus the market a little bit, and I like my white. Yeah, Gino has not been good for the last three to four weeks. There's no doubt about that. Very difficult matchup here for Gino against the Jets' pass defense. We'll have Tyler Lockett back though for this okay. game, which I think makes a difference for him at least. All right. I mean, the, the drop off after Lockett was has been severe. Like, yeah, it was a good win that uh, they didn't bad. Well, good yeah, bad. they did not help him last week. Bad. All right. That is going to do it for this edition of Establish the Bets. We'll be back next week for the final Establish the Bets of the season. Appreciate you all being here. Be sure you're following Davidow at Davidow Matthew on the Twitter machine. For Davidow, for Producer Adam, I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.